Good evening, Rise Kayong Elementary School students and families. I hope that you are all doing extremely well during this time. I hope that you're happy, that you're safe, and that you're healthy. Um, today is May 22nd, 2020, and I will be sharing my principal's message with you all regarding our COVID-19 school closure updates um, and any, any new information that we have. So um, before we get started, as always, I like to begin with a moment of gratitude. And of course, I would like to start with gratitude toward all of our families. Um, you all have done an amazing job with supporting your students and um, communicating with us. Um, we really appreciate all of, all of the hard work that you've been doing. I'd also like to say thank you to our teachers and our instructional assistants for continuing to provide an excellent education for our students in incredibly difficult times. But finally, um, I would like to give a shout out to Miss Jessica Lee, who has put together this amazing website that I want to draw your attention to. So this is our RKES student culture website. And the site is here, sites.google.com slash brightstarschools.org slash RKES student culture slash home. And on this, you'll see several different things. Um, you'll see our RKES school values, our SEL lessons, so the lessons that myself, Mr. JC, Miss Lee, um, Miss Jasmine, and Miss Natalie have been putting together with the enrichment lessons. We also have a recording of our virtual Dragon Fest in case you missed that last month, our recordings of our family engagement sessions, links to teacher websites, counseling support, and more. Um, if you scroll down on this, oh, sorry, if you scroll down on this first page, you'll also see an amazing video that our one of our instructional assistants, Mr. Perez, put together. Unfortunately, I can't play it on here because it does have a song that um, is just copyrighted and you can't play it on YouTube. But what we can do is we can, I, I encourage you to go to the website and look at it. And then finally, um, you know, a lot of families have asked us, what else can I do with my student? Um, you know, we're bored at home, we need more to do. And so we developed a Pinterest page, which is really exciting. Um, and so Pinterest just has a lot of different activities. And so we have at home learning activities. There are uh, posted boards for kid friendly recipes, meta moment activities and easy arts and crafts. So if you go to the website and you scroll down, you can click on this link and it will take you to our Pinterest page. So, so thank you, Miss Lee, for doing that. Um, and thank you, Mr. JC and Miss Lee for helping set up um, EBT cards for our families. Um, you'll get more information about that later. So our agenda today, we're going to start with a mood meter check and so just internally um, take a look at the mood meter and think, where are you today? So today I'm feeling pretty content. Um, I had a really good staff meeting earlier today. We have a lot of great things planned for the next few weeks that I'm excited to share with you. Um, and so I, it's always important to pause, ask how we're doing and take care of ourselves as needed. So today I will be giving an update about school reopening. We will have a final packet distribution on Thursday, May 28th. We'll be doing virtual spirit week and a virtual dragon fest next week. Um, we do have end of year, um, end of current year closeout procedures. So um, how we're gonna close the school year out. And then my next principal's message. Um, I'm not gonna talk a lot about instruction because our distance learning protocols will remain the same. Students will have videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday and their small groups on Tuesday and Thursdays. Um, we do not have school on Monday. So Monday is the Memorial Day holiday. And so we will not have videos on Monday. All right. So to begin, I want to give you an update about school reopening. And unfortunately, not a lot has changed since we last spoke. So um, we still do not have any definite or definitive news about what school will look like in the fall. We um, do have to wait on the guidance from Los Angeles um, Unified School District, as well as the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. But we are still prioritizing student and staff safety over everything. We are making bulk purchases of masks and gloves and sanitation um, supplies and hand sanitizer so that we are prepared for um, how to keep your students safe when school resumes. 
Again, we're purchasing many items to keep the school sanitized. Um, I mentioned all those plus thermometers and distancing equipment. Um, and so we're thinking about how can we do social distancing in the classroom? What new furniture, what new things do we need to make sure that everyone is safe? And then um, again, we have to wait on LAUSD and the County Health Department for guidance. We're anticipating that should come out in the next few weeks. And of course, we will give you updates as we receive them. And then finally, um, Bright Star Schools and Rise Kayong Elementary School leadership are strategically planning for three different possibilities, three contingencies. Number one, we're planning for if we are back full time August 24th, and that would mean all of the students in the class at one time. How can we do that in a way that is socially distant, is keeping students safe, and is keeping things equitable for our students? So we are planning for that. We're actually hoping for that because that's, we believe what will be best for our students. Um, however, we know that, you know, health precautions may not allow it. We're also planning for some sort of hybrid possibility. So potentially some days your student would be at school, some days they would be at home, depending on the day. Um, we don't know that for certain what that will look like. And we're also planning for full distance and what that could mean if we have to start in August with the same situation where we are doing full distance learning. I know all three of these situations um, are maybe not ideal and maybe you have concerns about some of them. Um, we'll do what what um, is best for our students and we'll also do what is dictated by LAUSD and the County Health Department. Um, I'd also like to share this with you all. So a few days ago, um, this guidance from the CDC or the Center for Disease Control um, was shared. This image was shared on social media. Um, you may, might have seen it on social media. It is misleading and it does not have all of the information. So all of this, these were, um, this was taken from a giant document and put onto an infographic to share on social media. And so there are a couple things on here that are not, are not completely accurate. Um, you know, it, one of the things that it seems to think is that students will not be able to be on the playground. That is simply not true. Um, what that could mean though, is it could mean that we just have fewer students on the playgrounds at a time. So instead of having 48 kids on the playground at a time, we might have 12 and we'll just have to arrange our schedule in a way that still allows students to have playtime. So um, students will still get playtime. School will still be fun. We'll still have celebrations and students will still get to laugh with one another. Um, we're just gonna do it in a way that's safe and we're gonna do it in a way that protects your students um, and our staff members. So, um, and we're still, we're gonna do a lot of these things on this list too. We're gonna make sure that things are safe. We're gonna do everything that they asked us to do, but just it, it was a little bit misleading. And so I just want to point that out there to you. The real document from the CDC looks something similar to this, and you can find it at cdc.gov slash coronavirus. And what this is, is this is the decision-making procedure that we are going to be making and how we are going to be able to um, adhere to local and state orders, protect children and employees at higher risk for severe illness. So we do have some staff members and there are some students who have a higher risk factor for catching coronavirus than others. We have to make sure we protect them, um, screening of employees, et cetera. So we will be using this to make decisions. Okay, and like I said, as I have information, I will always share it with you all. Okay, so I'd like to move on now to our final packet distribution, which will be on Thursday, May 28th. I cannot believe we're only four weeks away from the end of the school year, um, but here we are. And so we'll be doing one last packet distribution next Thursday. So we will do it again, a no contact distribution and pickup similar to what we did previously. Um, this will be on um, Thursday, May 28th at our school site. And we're going to do it in waves to keep as many students off camp or people off campus as possible at a given time. So if your student is in transitional kindergarten, we're going to ask that you come from 930 a.m. to 11 a.m. If your student is in kindergarten with the last names A through M, we're asking you to come from 11 to 1230. And if your student is kindergarten last names and last names in through Z, we're going to ask you come 1230 to 2pm. 
Um, if those time frames don't work for you so well, you can come anytime 930 to 2. But we are asking you if you have flexibility to please make sure you come at those times so that we can adhere to social distancing as much as possible. We will also be distributing two workbooks, um, one of which I have right here and I'll go ahead and show you. Sorry, I dropped that. Um, it's a workbook that um, is called Kids Learn and it's basically a summer work packet. And so the teachers will use this as we're finishing up the school year. And then there's also extra work that can be extended throughout the summer to help your student be successful. So they'll get two workbooks, they'll get that, plus they will get um, a writing workbook. So we gave out one writing workbook, we're gonna give out another one. So you get two workbooks. We're also asking that you drop off any completed work that your student has so that we can, um, we can look at that and we can make sure that your student is still learning. The parking lot will be open for parking so you can park in there and then what you'll do is you'll walk around to the area next to the playground where the work will be picked up. Mr. JC will have the tables set up um, with all of the information on it where you can just pick up what you need, um, drop off the packets and then leave. It should not take you more than two to three minutes on campus to do all of this. And again, without contact, you'll pick those up. Um, you'll pick up the child's workbooks, drop off their work, and um, please follow the signs and directions. So these are the two workbooks that we're gonna be passing out. And if your student is in TK, this will just say getting ready for kindergarten. Um, so students in TK will get the one that says getting ready for kindergarten. Students in kindergarten will get the one that says getting ready for first grade. So I know many of you might be asking the question, um, what if I can't make it? Um, I do know that um, many of you are already back at work. Um, and so this might not be a ideal time for you. We understand. And so um, we're asking that you please contact us in advance by phone or by parent square so that we know who to expect and who not to expect. Um, please do that in advance. So the day before, the day of, just so we have an idea. Um, we will mail only if someone in your family has COVID-19 symptoms. So these two workbooks are pretty heavy and the mailings will get pretty expensive. And so please, um, um, if it's just for work, let us know, but um, we're gonna mail only for COVID-19 symptoms. And if you're missing for another circumstance like work schedule conflicts, what we'll do is we'll arrange for you to pick up your child's work at a later time. Um, we can make that appointment with you um, on campus um, where you can come in and pick that up maybe after you get off work or on a different day. Okay. I also realized that I accidentally did not include my Spanish translation on here, so I am sorry for that. And what I'll do is I'll update it as I am um, posting it to Parent Square. So. And the last thing is a bit sad for me to think about, um, but I know that um, some of you will not be returning to Rise Cleong Elementary School next year for various reasons. And if you know completely that your child will not be returning to Arquez next year, we're gonna ask that you also please return your Chromebook to us on Thursday, May 28th, if you checked one out with us. So, um, we are asking it back on that date. Um, if you are returning with us, you will be able to keep your students' Chromebooks throughout the summer because we're gonna keep all of our online platforms live through the summer so that you can continue learning or your student can continue learning. So reading eggs, splash math, Epic, EL education, all of that will still be available through the summer for your student. If your plans change, so maybe you think you're going to leave the school, but then it turns out that you want to stay. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe your family decides to move and you still have a Chromebook. It's okay. We understand life happens, but if your plans change during the summer, you can contact the main office to arrange that Chromebook pickup or drop off. But what we are asking is that if you are not coming back to school with us next year, that you do get that Chromebook back to us, um, whether that's on the 28th or if it's later, if you're still waiting to make that decision. 
Um, we won't release final cumulative records until we have the computer back um, in our possession. Um, we hope that 100% of you will stay with us next year. We absolutely love all of our students and we want you to be a part of our community. Um, they're just fantastic, but we do understand that situations change, families move, and that that could be a possibility. Okay. All right, so that's final uh, packet distribution. Any questions, you can send them my way or to Ms. Ms. Lee or Mr. JC. So next week, we are going to do another virtual uh, Spirit Week and Dragon Fest, which is very exciting. Um, and so on Tuesday during small group sessions, um, we'll have Best Self Tuesday. And what that will be is you can either um, wear the color that you feel best on the mood meter. So maybe that's yellow, maybe that's green um, or whatever you feel best on the mood meter. Or you can come in a superhero costume. So I know a lot of students dress as superheroes for Halloween. So maybe you have that costume. And so um, please come dress in one of those two. And families, feel free to dress up with your child. Um, that would be a really fun way to spend the day. On Thursday, we're going to do Get Fit Thursday. And so um, please wear your workout gear, your yoga or exercising clothes um, so that we can really promote physical education. Um, families, you can send us photos of your healthy snacks and workout sessions to us on Instagram at, at RKES underscore dragons. And then finally, on Friday of next week, we are going to have our virtual Dragon Fest. So this is not live, but it's a recorded video recording where we'll share our value awards and the Digital Citizenship Awards. We'll also post that video to Parent Square and Instagram at, our, at RKES underscore dragons. So we're very excited to have our May Dragon Fest, um, and we hope that as many of you as possible can participate. Okay. All right. And then finally, what I'd like to speak about a little bit is how we are planning on closing out the school year. So originally, we were planning on having a kindergarten graduation um, because kindergarten is the first year that students are in school full time and we feel like it's incredibly important. Um, but of course, things are changing. So um, I'll just show you this document first. So, um, oh. Let's talk about this first. So we'll do a couple of things first. Um, first, we'll talk about on um, the end of the year class party. So um, we are going to do class parties on Tuesday, June 9th during the students small group sessions. Um, and so during that time, what will happen is the teachers will do a small celebration and commemoration of their work this year. Students will have a chance to say goodbye to their teachers. We'll have a chance to say goodbye to some of their classmates. Because it's a virtual um, celebration, we won't be able to give food. Um, you know, usually we have cupcakes and different um, fun things for the students, but you can give your snack to your student at home um, and they can eat it during that time. And then um, we'll do a slideshow of the celebrations to, um, to show later just sort of how the students um, look back on their year and how they can, um, you know, they can look back at it later and just remember. Okay, so we'll do that on Tuesday, June 9th. Okay, and this is what I was wanting to show you. So um, many, all over social media right now, there are pictures of people in different states and different communities doing drive-through graduations, or you have videos of teachers coming to students' homes and giving different things away. Unfortunately, we live in one of the areas of the country that has been hit hardest by coronavirus. And so we are not allowed to do any of those celebrations. So the County of Los Angeles Public Health and the Los Angeles County Office of Education have put out this statement. And I'll read this statement in red. The Los Angeles County Department of Public Health Officers Safer at Home order prohibits all public and private gatherings. The order does not allow any exemption for graduation gatherings of any type in order to limit the spread of COVID-19. This means all in-person graduation ceremonies including the use of cars for driving graduations, even if one student at a time, are considered public gatherings and are therefore prohibited. Virtual ceremonies are permitted and encouraged as a means of commemorating this important life event for young people and their families. 
So because of that, we will not be holding a live um, virtual or a live graduation in any way. We're not going to do a car parade or anything like that. However, we are going to hold a virtual graduation celebration for our scholars. We are very excited about that and we think that it will um, as best as possible replace that experience. So, um, like I said, unfortunately, LA County is not allowing home visits or graduation ceremonies, even in drive-in celebrations. Again, you may have seen some of this on social media, but it's from different states and different communities, not from Los Angeles County. Um, the guidance could change, so things are changing rapidly and, you know, LA County could put something out in the next couple of weeks that says that this is okay. But because of equity, we're not going to have the in-person celebration. Many of our families do not have cars because they live very close to the neighborhood and that would mean they would not be able to participate and that is not equitable and so we will have a virtual celebration. Okay. Um, so, but I know that, you know, we maybe wanted to do it in person, but it's going to be really fun and we're really excited about what we've planned for that virtual celebration. So, um, we'll do it on June 15th, 2020, um, which is the last Monday of the school year. And it'll be from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. live on Zoom. We'll share that link with you um, on Parent Square um, so that you can be there and participate. Um, 100 participants are permitted on Zoom calls. So what we're asking is you please just limit it to your immediate family um, so that we don't have you know, 300 people trying to get into the Zoom room, but instead we have less than 100. Okay. If for some reason you can't attend this live for any reason, we will still re uh, record it and we'll share it on Parent Square so that you can have that experience of seeing um, the graduation. So what we'll do is we're going to do a really fun end of the year slideshow. Um, we're going to show pictures all the way back from August until now. We can see how they've grown and how they've matured. We'll do end of year awards. So um, we'll have end of year value awards perfect attendance awards, and then we'll do a Dudley's award, which is similar to a student of the year. Then we'll have our virtual graduation. We'll have a picture of every single scholar with their name, and we'll do a very quick congratulations to them. Um, it'll be very quick. Unfortunately, we can't give them anything in that moment because we're virtual, but we can still um, show their photo. Okay. And then um, we will have diplomas and awards. So if your student got an end of year award, um, available for pickup on the final day, pickup day, which I'll show, I'll share with you in a moment. Or if you can't pick up during that time, we will mail those to you so that you can have those in celebration. Okay, so please join us on June 15th. And again, we'll share more information with the Zoom link as we get closer. And then finally, um, we'll talk a little bit now about final end of the year closeout procedures. Um, we will do a end of year personal item pickup on June 17th, which is the last day of school. That is a Wednesday. Um, many of you were asking about when you can get their extra clothes, things like that. Um, what we'll do is we will have drive through pickup um, with pre labeled bags in the and we'll just place them in the trunk of your car to make it as quick and contactless as possible. So um, Just all of the personal items will have the students name will be really quick and ready to go. Um, if you are a walker, you can come and pick those items while respecting social distancing protocols. We are asking that you wear a mask um, so that you um, are adhering to the, the County Department um, of Health requirements. And then what you'll pick up during this time is the extra clothing that your student left. Um, student work that was in the classroom, the teachers are going to come earlier that week and they're going to take down all of the student work, um, their drawings and so forth, so that you have those um, as remembrances. And then lunch boxes, water bottles, things like that. Um, if there is something that is clearly labeled and is not picked up on that day, we'll save it. But if it's something that has not been labeled, we will have to do a, a donation for those things. So um, we'll give final information about exact times and the details as we get closer to June 17th, but that is what we are planning on doing right now. 
All right, so those are the updates that I have. If you have any specific um, questions, please reach out to me personally on ParentsWare. Um, and I will do another message on June 5th, and that will have better detail or more thorough details about um, the graduation ceremony, pickup, um, and kind of how we're going to support the scholars over the summer, because I know many of you are concerned about that as well. And hopefully I'll have some more information about school reopening too. If there are any updates between those dates um, before the 5th, of course, we'll share those with you promptly on Parent Square. And as always, if there is anything that you need for any member of your family, doesn't have to be the student, please reach out to us so that we can help you find resources. Okay, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Remember, no school on Monday, so we will see you on Tuesday. And um, we are very grateful for everything that you have done to support your scholars.